Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon Kendall with American Crafts and We Are Memory Keepers, and I'm really excited to be back in class with the Printmaker tool. So I've taught some previous classes on Printmaker, but I hope today that we can cover some things that is my favorite way to use the Printmaker. And I had realized we had never taught a class on using it for organizing. And I think the Printmaker is the perfect tool for helping you to organize all the parts of your life that need organizing. So I'm gonna jump right in because if you've ever been in one of my classes before, I pack them full of stuff. So feel free to chat me questions and our awesome moderator is going to interrupt me um, if there's anything you need me to cover for you, okay? So we're gonna just jump right in. All right, so I'm going to assume that you already have this beautiful little machine, the printmaker and that you already have downloaded the app on your phone. Okay, so this is the Printmaker app. We'll do the overhead view, okay? And I'm going to assume in this class that you already have this installed and that you've already played around in it a little bit. If you are brand new to Printmaker, I am going to be teaching a Printmaker 101 class and that is on March 30th, I believe at noon central time. So if you can look forward, um, I know they're going to put the link in the chat as well. That is a great class to come to if you're brand new to Printmaker because I'll walk through the whole setup, getting started. It's really a 101 class. This one class, I'm going to assume you've played around with it a little bit and I'm going to show you some of the fun things you can do with your Printmaker to organize. Okay, so first thing, I want to start with a planner. The printmaker is so fun to use in a planner. So this is a spread that I've done using the printmaker. I haven't written a whole lot in here. This is just mostly my printing. And then as the week comes, I will fill in notes and make little comments and write down memories and things like that. But I wanted to show you how you can do all these different kinds of things with your printmaker. So I'm gonna to flip to a blank page. And when I'm working with my printmaker, I love using the magnetic mat and the template ruler that's also magnetic. That's just my personal preference. You don't absolutely have to have that to work in a planner, I mean, with the printmaker, but I like to use it when I'm working in mine. Okay, so here's my pages that I just pulled out. I like to pull mine out, use the magnetic mat and get perfect alignment. So first thing we need our dates, right? We need dates. This is pretty, this is just a blank planner. So it really is customizable, which I love. So I'm going to start oops, by going here on my app down here at the bottom. There's multiple ways you can get to a blank canvas. This one's the easiest way from the home screen, just hitting that little plus sign. So now I have this blank canvas and I want to put the date up here. So I think I did March 13th through 19th. Okay. So it's so easy. You just Tap in here, down at the bottom, there's a tools icon. And when I put push on the tools icon, you can see it brings up these four options down here. Okay, and I'm just doing text right now. So I'm going to click on that text icon. That brings up a keyboard and I can type in whatever I want to write. So on mine, I did multiple lines of text in one. So I'm going to just delete where it says text. And then I'm going to start with week of. Week of, okay, just regular typing, just like you do on anything. Okay, so now you see that week of on my screen. With Printmaker, the print area is half an inch high by however long you wanna go. So if I'm going to fit more in here, I need to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to tap on it and I get that bounding box around there. And then I'm going to resize it just with the dragging the corner. And I can move that up where I want it. And then what you'll see at the bottom, since I'm in a font, you can see all of the editing tools for a font right there. So to change my font, I'm going to click right there on font. Now it brings up this list that shows you an example of the font. And you can just scroll down and find one that you like. There's a lot of great fonts that are included in here. Lots that look like handwriting. This one kind of looks like a typewriter. So that's the one I'm going to choose. So that's Nixie one. So, okay, so now I've got my week of. Now I want to put what week it is. So I'm just going to go back down to tools, do the same thing I did before, but I'm going to write my month. 
So March, my week 13 through 19. Okay, just typed up there. Then I'm going to hit done and it will show up on my canvas. And then just the same thing, I'm going to resize it, change my font. Let's see, I think I did open sans on this one. Open sans. And then you can also, I wanted it to be a little bit more bold than that even. So down here on the bottom, you can see there's an icon where you can change it to bold, italic, things like that. So I'm just going to click on bold. So you can see that that really brought that up. Now I need to resize it again. And what I like to do is decide where I want it and how big I want it. So you can see here, I decided to just put it kind of in the corner. And this is another reason I love this ruler guide because it has all of the measurements right there on the ruler guide. So I can just set it right where I want it and decide how many inches I want it to be. And a half inch is going to fit perfectly in the space at the top of my planner. So I think I want it to be about two and a half inches long-ish. So I'm just going to make sure that my canvas size is reflecting that. So I'm going to click on canvas down here at the bottom, right next to where there were tools. There's also a canvas icon and I can slide this over and see what a two and a half inch space is going to look at like. Okay, so now I've increased my bounding box on my canvas, my printable area to match the space that I want to put it in. Okay, so now I can do some more resizing to get this exactly how I want it to fill this space. Okay, now I could print it just like that, but it's kind of boring just leaving it black in my opinion. So I am going to change the color and that is also done in the text formatting tool. So I clicked the text I wanna format and then right down here, I can click on the color and it brings up a color palette. Since this is March, I'm going for a green theme. So I think I'm gonna do this dark green then I clicked on the other text, scroll down, we'll do bright green. Okay, so now I've changed the print color. Now, one more thing I wanna do is I think that just as a decorative element, I want to add a little bar right there that goes through and divides those two lines of text. And so how I'm going to do that is click tools and then right down here. So here's the font one we used right next to it is a shapes icon. So when I click on shapes, it brings up this box that allows me to choose different things. So you can either choose line or rectangle. Often when I'm adding in a line, I just choose a, a rectangle. It puts in a square, but that way I can resize it to whatever width I want. So you can see I can squish it up, right? And then make it bigger this way. So a line is just a determined width. And sometimes I like my lines to be fatter. So I use a rectangle. Okay. And then I'm going to slide that in there where I want it. Okay, so now we've got a line dividing. You can really mess with it and get it as thick or as white as you want. And I'm going to change its color too in the same way down here on the fill. So I selected it and then some shape editing tools came up and I can go in and make it another color of green. Okay, so now I've got all of my text ready to print with a dividing line, just the size I want it. So now this icon down at the bottom is the print icon and that's what we need to do to print next. Okay, so I've got my printmaker ready. I've got my ruler guide where I want to print and I'm going to select print, send to printer. And now my printer, you notice, flashed and made some cute little noises. It reminds me of an Android in Star Wars. That's what I like to think of it as. But it, it lets you know that it's ready. So then I can pick it up, set it into my guide. This is another reason I love this guide. There's multiple ways to see where your printmaker is going to start printing. So you can see this light right here. That edge of the light when the printmaker is flat, that is where the print will start. So you can see right there, see where I can see where it's going to start. Okay, but when I set it down in my ruler, that perfectly lines up to the zero. So this ruler is made in a way so that once your printmaker is sitting here, 
Zero is your starting point, which is another reason I love this. Okay, so now that my printmaker is in here and ready, I'm going to press the button on the top. And when it's green, it's ready to print. And then all you do is slide it across. Okay, so now we've got our month printed on our calendar page. Easy, right? Okay, and so in that same way, I added a border at the top because I thought it needed some color up here. So let me show you how I did that really quick. So now I say I'm done printing. Okay, now I can save this. And usually when I'm working in a planner, I do save these because next time when I flip the page, all I have to do is come in, click on this, click change the text, which is this icon right here at the bottom. And I can go in and I can just leave all of my design the same and just change it to, what would that be, 20 to 27? So I can just change it really easily and print on my next planner page. So for things like dates, I usually always save it because it just makes your life easier in the future. You don't have to figure that all out again, unless you want it to be different, then you can design a new one. Okay, so I'm going to not save it this time just for class purposes because I have it saved elsewhere. And I'm going to come back in and get a new file. So at the top, I clicked file, new. Okay, and it'll say, do you want to save? or not save, and I'm just gonna say don't save this time. Okay, now I have another blank design area or canvas to work on. Okay, so I'm going to see how long this space is and resize my canvas. So I have about three, uh, three and three fourths inches on this side. So we'll start with that. Okay, so I'm going to resize my canvas by just dragging this handle, sorry, on my phone sometimes I move it instead of dragging it. Okay, and I'm gonna go all the way out to three and a half. Let's go four. Okay, and if like you're working on a device like mine where I can't see that whole space, like it's, I'm having to move it to see both ends. You can come up here at the top. You'll see right there, there's a zoom button. So I can zoom out a little bit so that I can see the whole thing on my screen. Okay. All right. So I just want to put in an image that's a border image. So I'm going to come down here to tools where we were before. So we've used shape, we've used text, and now we're going to use this one right here, which is import. Okay. So this is where it's going to show me all of the collections that I have available to me in the printmaker app. There's so many fun designs in there and so many fun collections. I'm pretty familiar with them. I'll show you another way to look at them in just a second, but you can go to them this way and I can go to Indigo and Ivy, which is the collection I know I want. I'm gonna show you another way in just a second. And then I can come up here to patterns and the pattern, so there's clip art. So you can see this clip art are like little icons and phrases and things like that. And then the patterns, are borders basically. So there are these longer strips that can be repeated and printed in a repeat in a solid line. So I'm going to choose this one right here, this watercolor border. Okay, so it's come onto my canvas, but you can see right now it's only filling to about two and a half inches and I need it to go three and a half. So I'm going to select it and I'm just going to pull it and extend it out. So this is one way you can do it. You can Pull it to extend it out. It will stretch the image if you do that. Like, see how I'm stretching the image? I don't know if you can see that. So it does change the look of it a little bit. So you can do it that way, or you can let it come on whatever size it comes on and do a repeat print. So I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But because this one's really flowy and watercolory, I don't care if I stretch that one a little bit. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Hit print, hit send to printer. going to put my zero where I want it to start. And slide. Okay, so now we've got this cute border at the top, but I want a little bit more of it over here. So I could either resize again, and I know now here I have about two and a quarter inches. Oops. So 
So I can move this around into two and a quarter. and squish it back down, right? On this watercolor image, it, it really doesn't matter if I'm shrinking it in that way, but I'll show you another way on another border how to do it a different way. Okay, so there's my watercolor image on that side. So now I've decorated that top part, right? Fun, right? So in the same way, I'm just gonna show you some files that I've created before on this planner. So this is the main landing page of the Printmaker app. And this is another way where you can see all of those collections. So Indigo and Ivy that we were just in, if I can see it, oh, there it is. All right, so I can click into it that way and see those same images and then just click out and then look at another one. So this way, if you're not very familiar with the icons and what images are in each collection, rather than going to import on your canvas, this is a good way to find an image that you want to use just straight from the home screen. Okay, and th this is cool because this is where all of your saved images will also go. So this is some of my own that I've named. So you can save things to your own collection. So this was this class, the Michaels class. So these are all of the images that I made that we're going to play with. So you can see there's my watercolor images we just played with that I saved from before. And so I wanted to show you how I did the numbers. Okay, so numbers, I just did the same thing. I just entered text the same way that we did before, but I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So the printmaker, naturally, you print it horizontally, like right side to side, but you can also print it vertically like this. And sometimes when you turn things on their side, you can stretch them and make them a little bit bigger than when they're in that horizontal position. So let me just show you really quick. So I just designed this the same way. So I just did my text the same way, but then I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but there's that little bounding box that's poking out right there. And that is the rotate. So I just grabbed that and rotated it. So you can see how you can rotate. Okay, so you can do that with any image, any text that you want to. Okay, and I'll show you how to print vertically. It's just the same, you just line your ruler up differently. Okay, so I sent it to my printer, the 13. So on my planner page, there's these little circles that were, I think were intended for the numbers to go into, but there's a space next to it, right next to the day of the week. So I want to have a bigger number than will fit in this circle. So I made mine bigger and I'm just going to put my ruler centered in that space. It's again, a perfect half inch. I don't know how I lucked out with this planner, but it's ready to go. So I've just made my ruler go vertical or you just do it without your ruler vertical and look at your light as to where it's going to print. And then I just line it up and print. Okay, so I just went ahead and did that. And again, you could see in my file, I saved each number individually. You could do that, or you could just go back in like I did here, save it, and then go back in and just edit that number. So I could just say, I'm done printing, go back to here, change that text to 14. This is how I usually work in a planner, right? And now it's ready to print again and I just send it to my printer. That's just faster because all of the designing is ready and you just keep going, right? Okay, so that's how I did all of the numbers all the way down both sides. Okay, another fun thing you can do that I don't think people utilize very much when they're using their printmaker is you can add photos. So I'm gonna hold this up here. So see how I added that photo of my daughter, Ella? So if you have a special event or something, or if you're doing some custom gift wrap, this is a fun thing to do, but it's also fun to use in a planner. So I want to show you how to do that. Here's another example. So there's a play date with Noah and his friend, right? Okay, so you can add photos very easily. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna go to a new canvas. So this little plus mark, right? So now I'm on a blank canvas going to tools again. Now we've covered shapes, text, import, and then this one is images. So I'm going to click on images and it will bring me you to whatever device you're using 
your most recent images. You can go into your camera app, your gallery app, wherever you store your images. Since I just recently used this photo of Ella, it's right here. So I'm just going to click on it and it then hit select at the top. So now you can see it brought that picture of Ella in onto my canvas. So to make it bigger and to allow for some text, I'm going to rotate it just like we did the number. And now I can bring it up here and see how it, this was as big as it could get before when it was standing vertically in that horizontal space. And so now I can stretch it bigger and get my photo even a little bit larger. Okay. So there's that photo on my canvas. Then all I did was add in text the same way. So I went back to tools. I added in a shape. Let's do a line this time. Okay. Oop. Got to grab my line. It's sometimes those little lines are hard to grab. If so, just zoom in. Okay. This one's straighter. You can fiddle with it. I'm not going to bother with it right now because you can see that you can fiddle with it and get it just how you want it. Then I'm going to rotate my line too. Okay, and stretch it. Okay, and move it up where I want it to go. Sometimes when I'm doing fiddly stuff like this, I will not design on my phone because one thing that's really cool about the Printmaker app is there is a desktop app and you can use it on a tablet or a phone. And I found that the bigger my screen is when I'm designing, the easier it is. And I actually like using it with my, with my Surface. I have a Surface, which is like a hybrid laptop tablet or just on my desktop computer because I like using a mouse because I can just grab things easier than with my finger. So that's a tip for you. Okay, so now I've done that, put that where, it want, where I want it. Then I can add in text. Ella's. Oops, didn't hold long enough. Okay, change, you can change the color, right? Change the font. I used a script font and I can rotate that. Okay, so now you can see how I'm starting to kind of build that whole design. Let me show you what it looked like when I was finished. Okay, so you can see I just added in three lines of text, made them all different fonts and colors, the photo that I added in, and then the two lines or rectangles that I also resized and recolored. Okay, so let's print it. This one is also a vertical print because we turned everything on its side, remember? So we could get it just a little bit bigger. All right, it's ready to go. And just as easy as that. Not cute. So I love doing fun things like that to play and, and do some fun things in the planner. I have so much I want to show you. So I'm just going to go over these a little bit to show you some other ideas. So this was also designed in that same way. So I turned it on its side and just did some fun little text and icons in there to kind of make it seem, you know, just a little more fun since that's St. Patrick's Day holiday. Down here, I printed text on an angle and I just filled the space with date night and a great big time. So there's all kinds of fun things you can do, appointments, and all of these icons were in the Printmaker app already and I just added text to them and changed the colors. So you can play around. There is a collection on the home screen that's called Planner Basics. And it has a lot of really commonly used planner icons, patterns, which these are those repeatable borders, but they're fun because they have some check boxes. So that pink check box right there, that is the same as this green check box. I just changed the color and printed it vertically like that. So it already is designed to be vertical. And then there's templates here, which is where there's 
there's dates and times. If you don't want to do a date like I did, there's one right there that can be customized. Everything in a template can be customized. So there's that box that I did the grooming appointment in, and I just added my text and changed the color. Okay, so there's like all these different things that are already designed for you and make it so easy to use in your planner. But you can use any images, whatever you like. Like this St. Patrick's Day icon came from a holidays image set. So really you can use any of those to use in your planner and make it really customized and really fun. Okay, does anyone have questions about planners? No questions so far. Are you doing no a great question so far? Okay, no. good. All right. Okay, so then I started thinking, what else do I like to organize? So I have a big craft room and it is a mess all the time because my kids have free reign in there too. They can use anything that doesn't say, you know, I have to put, don't use this. I want it for something, but otherwise they can use anything. And one thing that they do is they use my scissors on the wrong things. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to label scissors, which ones are for fabric and which ones are for paper. And so what a fun way to use your printmaker to do that, right? So that my kids know, don't cut paper with these, right? So let me show you how I did that. This is using the ribbon guide. So just like we have this, this is the little six inch guide. There's also a 12 inch guide if you're doing bigger things. For all the organizing we did today, I only needed the six inch one. So I didn't bring my 12 inch one, but you can get it at Michael's. And then this is the ribbon guide. And it's really cool because it comes with multiple sizes of these little side pieces. And they just click on to the pegs on the side, okay? Just like that. So there's three different sizes and they match the different sizes of ribbons that you can get. You can print on any ribbon, but this printmaker ribbon is, it works really well. It's available at Michael's in three different sizes and it works really great. So, so let Shannon, me show you how I did that. Yes. Sorry, we do have a couple of questions now. Um, okay. So the first one is, what is that little printer? Could you talk about that? And also how do you know when the ink is getting low? Okay. So this little printer is the printmaker by We Are Memory Keepers, and it's available at Michael's. It has an app that you download. Okay, so this is its base that keeps the ink from drying out on the bottom. And then it just has these little wheels to slide it along and you can customize and print anything with it. So the limitations to it are that it prints a height of half an inch. And so, but you can do bigger things, which I'm going to show you how to do that as well in this class by just repeating and doing multiple lines of printing. Um, so it, it has an app that you download to work with that printer. And this is the printmaker app. And how you know if it's getting low on ink, is let me get this up where you can see. See this little icon right there that looks like the printer? So I can click on that and it tells me what my ink level is. Can you see that right there? Okay, so I have a lot of ink in mine. It, the ink cartridges last a long time. So I use this all the time and I'm only that far down. And I don't, I think it was over a month ago I replaced my ink cartridge. Okay, this also tells you that you're connected via Bluetooth to your device and that how much battery charge you have on your printmaker. There is a cord that you just plug in right here to charge it. It's just a USB, a micro USB. And that will tell you all of the information about your printmaker. You can also go into diagnostics and see how much of each color you're using, right? And then you can also look at your account, which account you're signed into, because it just has you use an email to sign up. And why they have you sign up with an email is so that you can do what I was talking about before, where I like to design on my desktop, but my desktop doesn't have a Bluetooth connection to connect to the printmaker. So I do print from my phone or my tablet. So, but I can design everything, save everything, then just open this up and it's already right there. Like I could design here on my laptop, turn to this, refresh it, and that image would be there. So it's immediately syncs like that across all your devices, as long as you're signed in with your same email on all the devices. Shannon, a question about that. Um, does this app work on a computer or is it only for mobile devices? It, it, there is a desktop app. It's at wearememorykeepers.com. Under their printmaker tab, there's a printmaker tab there, and there is a desktop 
um, way of using it there. So I just bookmarked that on my desktop so that I can just like, if you bookmark it in Google or whatever, or whatever your um, internet search engine that you like, and you can bookmark at the top and then you can just click on it. It opens it up. Once you log in, it just remembers you on that computer and you can just design like crazy, save it, and then it will show up to print from here. So it just depends on what Bluetooth connectivity your desktop has. Like the one I have here at work doesn't connect to my printer in that way. Like I don't have a Bluetooth connection through that desktop. So I design on my desktop because I like using my mouse to, to get things really like where I want them a lot easier. And then I print from my phone. So that's how I like to work. So it's just up to you what you want to do. But yes, once you're logged in on your devices, they work across all of them. And there is that desktop version of the app. Okay, let's do our scissor labels. So there are so many fun collections in here. I'm trying to remember which one this came from. I think it was Live Happy Life. Live Happy Life is a collection that I love because it's really rainbowy. So it has this gradient rainbow border in the pattern section that I just love. So I went through my home screen. So now it's asking me if I just want to send it right to the printer or if I want to adjust it. And I want to because I'm going to add text. And I also want it to print centered on my half inch ribbon that I have down here. Okay, so I am going to resize my canvas again. You can see why I like using my computer because sometimes I grab the wrong place when I'm resizing. Oop. Just because my touch screen is so much more sensitive than when I'm using a mouse. Okay, and I like to make it as big as I can. Okay, so there's my gradient. So I want this ribbon to be double sided. So I'm going to show you an example here. So see how when I fold the ribbon over, I can see the color on both sides. So that's what's cool about this ribbon. You can print on both sides. So what I've done is I've taken my ribbon guide. I've put the coordinating size side panels on there that match my ribbon. And then I'm just going to thread it from the top down underneath this base and back up. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can see through the other side. Okay. Can you see that how it's threaded through? Okay, and then I'm going to leave a little tail out here because when you do printed ribbon, you slide this whole entire base with your printmaker. And you just, I like to just hold on to the other end. So I pull mine out just a little bit. If you're doing a repeated pattern that you want three feet of ribbon, you can do that. But I would say don't do it on this mat because you'll get a mark when you come down off the side. So if I was doing a really long piece, I would just use my whole entire table and I would just move it all along the whole entire table. But for this one, I'm just doing a short piece for my little, my little folded piece that I'm gonna do on my scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and print on one side without any text. So I'm going to send that to the printer. Actually, oh, I forgot something. Okay, so right down here, it says repeatable printing. And just so I make sure that I have enough, I'm going to repeat it twice. So I'm going to turn that on and it automatically comes to two times. If I was doing three feet of ribbon, like I said before, I would select infinite right there instead. But I am going to just do two times because I know I just need a little piece that's just long enough, right? Okay, now I'm going to send to printer. I'm gonna set the printer down inside that base. So you can see it just fits perfectly inside there. I'm holding this side just to hold the, the ribbon taut. And then I'm going to hit my top button until I get a green light to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and print. So you can see it automatically printed two times. Okay, so I have that length. Now I'm gonna print on the other side. So I'm going to flip it over, thread it through the same way. Okay. And I'm going to line that up as close as I can get. That's why I do a little extra because then I can trim the end if I want to. So the printed side is right there. And I have the edge of the printed side pretty close to the edge of this base, okay? 
But before I print again, I want to add text. So I'm going to come back into my app. I'm going to add text that says fabric. Right, so that my kids know no paper with those scissors. Okay, now I could leave it that font or I could change the font. I also want to move it down to the end and resize it so it's a little bit bigger. But I, I want to dovetail the end of my ribbon, so I'm going to leave a little gap at the end so I have room to do that. Okay, and then I'm going to change the font. Let's see which font do I want. Let's do Bobster, okay? And I'm just gonna leave it black on this one just because it will show up really well. Now I'm gonna hit print again. I'm going to, oh, I did this a different way, you guys. I forgot. So if I would have done that just like that, now you're learning troubleshooting with me, okay? If I would have done that text just like that, it would have printed fabric, fabric, right? Because I'm printing it twice. So I actually have to do three passes. So I'm going to delete this that I just did. Okay. And I should have just flipped it over and printed twice again. Sorry about that confusion. It's been a minute since I did this. So now I'm trying to rethink it. Okay. Because I don't want it to say fabric and then fabric, I'm just printing that border plain again. Technology it makes you think just a little bit, right? Okay, but now instead of taking my ribbon out, I'm just going to slide it back a little bit because now I just need to print fabric by itself there. Okay, so now I can save this border or I could delete it like that. And then I would come in and do my fabric. But since I've already designed it, I'm going to come over here and grab it from this so that we can I can show you some other things. I have a lot in class today and I always end up running out of time. Okay, so there's my fabric. And this time I lined it up right to the edge so I know it's going to start printing exactly at zero. Okay, and that way I can say I want it to start right there. Right there. Okay. Then you can trim and then I just folded it through the handle of the scissors like this. And I just did a little running stitch with a, a, a hand held needle to hold it to the scissor right there and just dovetailed the end. Okay, so that's how I did that scissor bit. Okay. Another thing I like organizing in my craft room is embroidery floss. So this is a really fun way to use some different types of materials at Michael's to do embroidery floss. And I wanted to show you how you don't have to just print on ribbon or on printmaker supplies. You can print on all kinds of things that you can find at Michael's. So these are just like near the popsicle sticks at Michael's. And they're these fun little oval shaped popsicle sticks that are fat. So I decided they would be cute to put floss on. So then I got my floss and I just decided the funnest way to do it for me was to, let me show you one of these that's darker, was to do the floss number, the brand of floss, and then a little bar that said what the name of the floss was, right? Okay, so I did it the same way that you've seen. So once you get the hang of the printmaker, you can do it the same, the same way. I'm just gonna show you my finished file since I know we're deep into class now and I need to uh, get going. Let me find it. Okay. So just like before, like on the calendar page, I added three lines of text, resized them, changed the fonts. This is that rectangle shape again, right there. And I just made it a color that was close to my thread color, okay? And I resized it to be the width of this popsicle stick. So I'm gonna hit send to printer. It was designed in the same exact way. So here's a little tip. I can just set this right on here and print. And this is pretty low profile, so I can actually still get a good magnetic hold. But you can print on things that are taller 
And if you need to, just take a few extra of the same item that you're printing on and put them under the ruler and that will flatten it out and level it out for you so that you don't get any wobble in your, in your design. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here kind of low on the bottom. This one's the one I'm printing on. These are just helping me level my ruler, okay? Then I'm going to set my printmaker on here just the same. We're gonna print on wood. Oop, I didn't have it perfectly centered. Let's try again. Let me show you a trick. Okay, I'm gonna see what size I did this. So I did this one and a half inches. So I need to make sure my popsicle stick is centered at one and a half inches. Okay, so that actually means that I need to center the three fourths right there. So there's different ways you can do for your alignment. It's up to you when you play with it, how you wanna do it. Usually I say it's best, I think I did it this way so I would have a little bit of overlap over here so the color would wrap the sides of my stick. There we go, that's better, okay. So there's my printed little stick. And then all I did was wrap the floss around, punch a hole in it, and then put it on a ring. Okay, and then again, just like before, you can just go into the one you've already designed and just change it for each new color that you want to add to your floss ring. Thought that was a fun way. So the printer will print on anything that's a porous surface. So it works great on fabric, on paper, on wood, anything like that. Um, if it has a glossy surface like glass or um, a shiny vinyl or anything like that, it's going to slide right off of that. So you want to get printable materials or matte materials, something that has a little bit of grit, a little bit of porous surface. You can see I got some ink on my mat right here. This is this beauty. It just wipes right off. But that's what will happen if you try to print with the printmaker on something that's got a coated glossy surface. It'll just wipe right off because it is an inkjet printer. Okay. I wanted to show you another label that I did in a similar way. I'm not going to walk through the whole process, but I want to show you how it turned out. So these are little paint jars. I, I end up doing projects with like a bigger bottle of paint. And then I end up with these little bitty bits left, but I might want to touch up the project. And so I found putting them in these little jars that I got at Michael's, there's multiple sizes on the class list. This is one size. So like if you're doing bigger, these are the shorter ones. I love these little jars. They're plastic, not glass. So I can store them in my garage. And if I'm not fearful that they're going to get broken. And I did this just the same way as before. So these, you can see, I put the paint name, and the number on one print. Then I went in and made another file that was the name of the paint itself and a little circle behind it that matches the paint color just for cute factor. And then down here, I made a file that shows what I used it for. So I'll show you on my phone what that file looked like. And I just printed it in three passes, right? So here's the, here's the paint name. So I printed that in the middle. This is the brand and the paint number so that if I needed more, that's handy. You know, because when you throw away the paint can or whatever you recycle or whatever the paint can that you don't need that huge can anymore, you lose all that information. But that's what I thought the printmaker would be perfect for that. And then here is an example of how I put three lines of text to say what I had, what project I had used it on. So it was used to do just those parts of a play kitchen I did for my granddaughter. Okay, so that is another fun way to do it. And I printed on um, this printable vinyl. So look at Michael's and find all of the different printable surfaces. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they have. This is printable vinyl and I just took a hole punch and punched a circle. So the hole punch and the printable vinyl are on the class list. And then I just printed straight onto there, starting with the center line, right? Printed the paint color, moved it up, went into the other file, printed the brand, went into the other file and printed the use. So that's how I did that one. Such a fun little way to organize, keep yourself, you know, in a, in, getting rid of all those giant cans and just using the little ones, right? Okay. 
<laughs> Excuse me. All right. Let me check my notes, making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. I also like really like organizing in my kitchen. And I wanted to show you, so we have about 15 minutes. I'm gonna skip ahead to a, another printable product that I really, really love. And this is also by We Are Memory Keepers. It was designed actually to be used with our tumblers in the spinet program, but it's this water slide decal paper and it's a printable. So it's a fun one to use. So I'm going to pull out, it comes in full sheets like this to go in the printer, but we don't need that much for this project. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm going to grab my stuff and show you a design that I did. Okay. So this is a jar that has the water slide decal on it. All right. For a pantry. So you can see that's a lot bigger than the little labels that we've been doing so far, but it's just done the same way, right? Multiple lines of printing. So I printed an icon and all the different lines of text. So let's do one together. I have this other big jar that's for sugar cookie mix. So let's make a label for it. I'm gonna put it right over here. Shannon? Um, yes. We do have a question from Nancy here. So she okay. says, it seems that if I make my canvas over two inches, it prints a thin black line at the end of the print. What am I doing wrong? You know, I have had that happen sometimes as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I have found that I just need to shorten. Let me just get a little sip of water. Shorten that canvas space just a hair, save it go out of the project, come back in. And when you reopen it, that won't be there. That is a little quirk that's in the app. I have let our app developers know that that's happening. So they're working on a solution for that. Um, sometimes I'll see that line too when, I'm, when I do infinite printing. So if you're seeing it in between, just make, it, make your image go a little bit outside of that bounding box, save it, go out of the project and come back into the project. And it should be a fix. It's a workaround for right now, but our app developers are working on fixing that. Sorry, that's happening to you. I know it's frustrating when you get that little black line at the end. Okay, let's do a sugar cookies label. So I knew that I was going to be doing about, a, so this is like a, a piece of the water slide paper that I cut and I thought, well, that's about, I measured it with a measuring tape and I said about three inches by three inches is a good size for these jars. So I cut it down to a three by three square. And then I like when I'm working on sometimes on, <coughs> excuse me, little um, small pieces, I'll put a little piece of tape on the back and just magnet it down or just tape it down to my mat, just because I don't want this to shift while I'm doing my multiple lines. That's just a little tip. The magnet does hold it in place really well, but sometimes if it's a smaller item, like a tag or a little square or something, and I, I, I might get a little movement as this slides underneath this, and I don't like it to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape mine. Okay, and I made this image. So what I did is I made my canvas to be two and a half inches wide. Okay, so I just center the two and a half inches and I made a little tiny mark. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that little green pen right there? I just drew on it with a felt tip pen. There we go. And that, you can. So yeah. I just drew on it with a felt tip pen after I figured out what side needed to be on the right. And I just line that green pen mark up and I found that that's the center for me. So I played around on a scrap paper. So that's what these are. These are just scraps of white cardstock. And I played around to make sure everything was centering properly before I used my nicer water slide paper. So that's another tip. You can just kind of use a scrap paper to practice printing. Okay. And let's just do these multiple lines really quick. Okay, so there's that line. Now, when I'm doing multiple lines, I wanted to show you guys this. I found that a good amount of spacing, like if you like my spacing that I have here between things, that is me taking this edge of the ruler and lining it up at the bottom of the previously printed image. Okay, and it, it prints like right in the center of this space. So you get a little bit of wiggle room there. 
and it gives you a little tiny bit of a gap. But I found that that's the spacing I like. So kind of play with it. And I just found that that made it easy for me. So I was happy that I liked that because I can just line that up to the bottom of the previously printed image. Okay. Then I did a text one and I wanted these big. So I did them all in individual files. So there's sugar. So see how I designed it. So the sugar filled the whole entire space. Okay. That's why I did them each in their own individual file. But again, if you were doing multiple jars, like I did that hot cocoa, you could edit this and just go in and put the next thing. Lined up to my pen mark again. So Shannon, okay. um, mm -hmm. sorry, another question. Um, will it print a uh, smear when washing these canisters? It won't because of this water slide paper. It's really cool. I'll show you how it works. So this is a little bit shiny. So there's a really matte side and a slightly shiny side, but it's meant to be printed on with an inkjet, inkjet printer. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's like beating up slightly on there. And so you just want to make sure that you dry each layer before you put your ruler over it again to not get any smearing. Okay, so I'm just like blowing on it. You could use a heat tool. It dries pretty fast because it is made to take the ink, even though it's a little bit shiny, but you'll be able to see it on there. Okay. And then this one, I line up again to the bottom. This little process of going through, finding your saved file. It, I mean, it is a little bit of a walkthrough, but it is pretty fast once you get everything designed. So there's cookies again, filling my whole space as big as I could get it. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry while I pull up my last line. Let's see. So these I just typed in, right? This is that same technique where I use the two lines, change the color, and then I just put the instructions for if you don't want to, so we can remember how to make this simple mix. Make sure that's dry. And then I'm going to line up again with my mark on the bottom of that line. And I just did lines of text, just like we did on our other projects. Okay, so now we have our little printed label. I love how it looks. And so then the only thing you need to do now, and this is what makes it so that you can uh, wash it, is you're gonna take this piece and you're going to grab a clear coat. So you can use matte, you can use glossy, whatever you want, but this is just a clear coat and you're gonna spray it, okay? Spray it, let it completely dry. If you want to speed the process, you can dry it with a heat tool. And once you do that, it's sealed in and you can, you can wipe it down and I'll show you how. So now I just took my scissors after that clear coat had dried and I cut out around my image like this. And then I'm just gonna grab a bowl and a little bit of water. I'll show you how cool this stuff is. This water slide paper is so fun. Okay, and now because I coated it, it can go right in this water. And that's what you're supposed to do. It's gonna curl up. And I just like to flip it over. It only needs to be in there like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And what that's going to do is release the water slide from, it's kind of like, think of a temporary tattoo when you were a kid. It's kind of like that, where it's gonna slide off the back. Okay, so now I'm gonna have, I'm gonna put it on this side of the jar. I'm gonna make sure it's cleaned off. Okay, so now I'm just making sure it can move. I'm gonna line it up where I want it on my jar and just pull the backing out from below or to the side, whatever you wanna do. And it's gonna slide right off that backer and onto my jar. Now you can take your fingers and just gently, because there's water under it, you can kind of reposition it. And you just gently use your fingers to kind of flatten out any air bubbles or excess water from under there. And then it will dry. 
And once it's completely dry, then you can wipe it down and you can wash it. So this one is completely dry. I did this one yesterday. So see how it's now completely adhered on there. If you do want to switch this out, you can take just like a spatula or a little scraper and just scrape it off and clean it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and it will come off. But I can wipe this down with a baby wipe, with a washcloth, and it will stay on there. Isn't that cool? I wanted to show you how great the printmaker works with this water slide paper. It's such a fun technique to do. Okay, we only have four or five minutes left. So I wanted to show you just a couple of other ideas. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is not happy with my all my talking. So this was another thing I did to organize my pantry. So my kids tend to want to eat me out of house and home. I don't know if yours do. So this is just my little reminder. These are printmaker tags that you can get at Michael's. They come in a, a bag like this and they have all different shapes and sizes and they have the fun gold foil. And I just did repeated lines again and reminded them that they could have one fruit and one other snack a day. But other than that, they need to stay out of my pantry, right? Okay, so that was another idea. Um, another thing I like to organize are school supplies. So this is just a fun binder and we recycle these tabs at our house. Like we like to reuse these over and over again. So I get the plastic ones and these are the printmaker labels, but really you can print on any label. These printmaker ones are just a great size because they're already a half inch tall. So I just made little icons and text to make a little little dividers for all the subjects and then did some of those long borders here on washi tape so just like we did ribbon there's printmaker washi tape that has a backer so that you can thread it through just like we did ribbon in that ribbon and washi guide okay and you can print big long pieces and customize your own washi tape to decorate notebooks decorate in your layouts anything like that that you want to use washi tape for also it's fun to make labels that are personalized so like that one that then you know I'm not in school anymore, so I should have put my daughter's name on there. But anyway, I love this book, so I guess it's mine now. But there's my label so that you can keep track of things. You could also print onto the binder itself if you wanted to. If you had one that wasn't so busy with fun color, you could print right on here. Like I could print Shannon's binder right on here with the printmaker, the same way we did the wood, the same way we printed on the paper, the water slide paper. So really, it's such a versatile tool. I really hope that you will get your hands on one and just start playing. I also hope you'll join me for that Printmaker 101 class at the end of the month, because then I will show you exactly how to do a lot of the things, bring your questions to that, because I really want to help people overcome any challenges they're facing with it so that you can really understand the fun and versatility of this fun machine. So I hope you have a great day that this helps you to want to create and that you can organize with the printmaker. Thanks.